Hello and welcome to all of our Sun Vision viewers from across the country. I'm Gareth Flusk and joining me is Miss World South Africa 2018, to Lisa King. Thank you, Gareth. We've got a jam-packed show ahead, so let's take a look at what's coming up. Starting off at Times Square, we head to the first ever Appetite Fest, headlined by some of the country's top chefs as well as the Master Chef Australia judges. Recognizing the achievements of entrepreneurs and small businesses in the township, we then head to Carnival City for the Township Entrepreneur Awards. Moving to the Eastern Cape, the team visits the Wild Coast Sun to learn more about the resort's facilities and activities. We then take a look at the wonderful fundraising initiatives established through the South Africa Legacy Initiative. Finally, we end the episode at Gallagher Estate in Gauteng, where the Smart Procurement Expo took place earlier this year. In August this year, South Africa's most famed chefs cooked up a storm at the first Appetite Fest at Times Square. Absolutely, Talisa. The Times Square culinary team really put on quite a show with special guest appearances by Siba Mtongana, Sarah Graham and many more. But to top off the list, all three MasterChef Australia judges hosted cooking workshops for fans. Let's take a look. of the South African culinary cuisine are the fact that it's part of the global kind of snowball in terms of interest of food. I mean, South Africans are just fascinated by it, they're driven by it. Um, the idea of the, the community around food, the shared table, um, the idea of food trends, of, you know, that, that social media aspect uh, is, is a massive driver here, as it is in Australia. And interestingly, I think between Australia and South Africa, we've got a lot in common. Our climate's the same. We enjoy uh, the barbecue. There's an argument between who's got the best barbecue, by the way. But it's, uh, it's a really interesting similarity. And also the fact that I think our food trends are fairly in line. You, you're on the same kind of roller coaster as us. Uh, you're fascinated by the same things that uh, we are, you know, whether it's great coffee or great casual food or uh, textural kind of plant based food or, you know, really kind of high end intricate technical stuff that are incorporating indigenous ingredients. I think there's, there's a lot going on. I think the unique selling point of Appetite Fest is diversity. It's food, it's beverage, it's food theatres. You know, so that whole diverse mix coming together with an element of entertainment that perhaps alleviates some of the boredom that would occur for people attending a normal exhibition, if you will, um, you know, is really what we're seeking to achieve and to create offerings that appeal to everyone so mom and dad and the kids can come and the kids can have a great time they want to come back next year you know they're going to experience some food they say you know there's an experience for dad there's an experience for mom and the experiences that can be done jointly you know as a family I take my hat off to Sun International for pulling off Appetite Fest it's a beautiful festival it's needed it's appreciated by us and uh, by the community, I think. And uh, I think the biggest thing about it is that it's so incorporated around a lot of different things. We've got international flavor, we've got local flavor, uh, we've got entertainment and food, we've got music and food, it's a vibe, so yeah, I'm enjoying it. My impressions of the Appetite Fest is that, yay, we have something going on in Pretoria, which is the capital city, and I've been so I'm overwhelmed in a good way with the response because you must remember this is the very first time that Sun International is hosting this but the response, oh my gosh, has been amazing. So I think this is awesome. Appetite Fest um, is all about what we have in South Africa and what we can give to the public. It's also bringing that, bringing everyone that shares that passion for food into one area. I love the variety, so I thought that it was incredibly well organized. And again, it was something for every palate, so I think it was fantastic.
Another successful event was recently hosted by Carnival City in the East Rand. With the aim to recognize and reward outstanding achievement in business, the Township Entrepreneur Awards focus on small business owners who are making strides in their communities. Talisa was there for the scoop. Congratulations for making it to the top 10. Now the real games begin today where you'll still be vying for that coveted title of Township Entrepreneur of the Year. Are you ready? <laughs> I didn't really expect it because um, the women that took part in the competition are also very strong, they're very driven, they also have um, great businesses. We are from IM Emerge who developed the Fulega concept. It's government recognition to understanding what we are doing and what needs to happen. So therefore we feel that this award is a recognition to what we've been doing. The first thing that we think of is to buy uh, a truck for the delivery because we've been using a shopping cart and all those kind of things. So we're going to put much on our business. We're going to find sustainability and, and sustainable growth moving forward. validated that whatever every morning that I wake up and every evening and all the sleepless nights today I was rewarded and it was confirmed that I'm on the right path. At this point of my life I think really what's important is that it is most humbling and most gratifying to be recognized in my own province. Carnival City's got an incredible amount of phenomenal venues that can host almost anything, whether it's a private little function or a huge event such as this. And um, not only do we have the, the venue space available, but we also do have a phenomenal banqueting and events and entertainment team that can pull off almost any event. The venue was spectacular. I was actually telling Anthony because um, we presented an award to get, uh, together. I was saying with these arenas, you can literally just change it into anything you want. The stage is amazing. The atmosphere is incredible. And um, I really enjoyed being here. been to the Wild Coast Sun, you'll know that this tropical beach-facing resort offers so much to do for families and holiday makers. Yeah, that's right, Talisa. Speaking from experience, this unique Sun International property combines adventure and relaxation, and its 18-hole golf course is world-class. We have an amazing 396 room hotel situated alongside, I would say, one of the most uh, pristine, unspoiled coastlines we have in the country. Out of those 396 rooms that we have to offer here, we've got uh, roughly seven suites and two presidentials, and um, we have 32 sea facing family rooms that we have to offer our clientele as well. Our theme is a Tahitian beach theme. So you'll obviously see that coming through the foyer, you'll see that with our uh, water feature at our main entrance, um, and then it lightens up to more of a light coastal look and feel. 
At Wakas, we have a number of conference rooms, for example, the Mesikaba 1 and 2, which are breakaway rooms that can open up, obviously, and can cater for a, a larger group or cater for smaller groups when you divide them. Our Amadiba room also caters for uh, quite larger than your Mesikaba in terms of numbers. And then we've also got the Tropical Nights Theatre, which caters for up to 650 people. At the Wild Coast Club, we've got a number of restaurants. We've obviously got our resident restaurant, which is Chico's Restaurant. We're famous for our really, really lovely breakfast. And if you're not looking for buffet food, we've got Spur. And we've got fast foods, fishaways, debonairs, steers, and we've got wild curries. Bar facilities, we've got a walk-up bar in the casino. And then we've got a Calypso bar, which is right in the casino where on the weekends we have entertainment in the bar. Then we've got our Lagoon bar, which is just off the reception, where it's also a sports bar. And then we've got the Driftwood bar, which is overlooking the ocean by the pool, where we serve cocktails and all sorts of drinks. And then the Country Club at the Golf Club, we've got a bar there overlooking this beautiful dam, where the golfers hit over the 18th dam. It's our signature hole. We've got so much for tourists down here, starting with our beach walk, which is our fossil forest. At the water park as well is the base for the Segway, and the kids and adults love it. We have a unique outlet, which is the Manganani Kids Spa. It's actually a spa for kids. Everything is made and centered around the kids inside the building. In the main uh, complex, we have the adult spa, if you can call it that, which caters for the parents. Our kids gaming zone is an area that's fairly large and uh, in that area as well we have the 10 pin bowling which is I think one of our hidden gems. We have an amazing offering to our MVGs and our locals in the area and they can participate in the gym activities at a lesser rate and that has also been very well received by locals and, and MVG customers alike. Walker well, Sun's Casino is very unique in the fact that it's got quite a low ceiling. It's a nice warm atmosphere. We've got 19 tables. We've got 550 slot machines, obviously always trying to keep up to date with the latest and greatest and changing it around for our clients and whatever their needs are. Our plantation room, which is our tables privé, is very unique in the fact that it overlooks the Indian Ocean. So whilst playing tables, there you are looking at the ocean. It's actually magnificent. We run a lot of promotions for MVG members where you use points for promotions. We've got kiosks where people get tickets for our drawers. We do a lot of promotions on the floor. In fact, we do one every day. At the Wild Coast Sun, we hold a number of events here, yeah? and in particular, our golf course, which is a championship golf course. We host a number of golfing events from VIP events to pro-ams, um, tour events, club pro-ams, and just generally a lot of golf tours come here. My favourite part of the hotel is where we located. You can't buy this anywhere, you don't get to see this often. It is seen in our repeat customer visits. Families keep on coming back to us uh, season in and season out and year in and year out. To mark the 60th anniversary of Miss South Africa, former title holders recently came together to form the Miss South Africa Legacy Initiative. The purpose being to help raise funds for the Nelson Mandela Children's Hospital and the Tomorrow Trust. It's a wonderful initiative, Gareth, giving former Miss SAs the chance to give back to the community and collaborate after their reign. The Miss South Africa Legacy Initiative was born during the 60th year anniversary of Miss South Africa. The purpose of the legacy is for all former Miss South Africans to come together and support causes that are dear to our heart. For me, the partnership between Sun International and South Sea has grown over the last three years and it's become very powerful. I think there's something that happens when two brands complement each other and they come together with a similar vision and with a desire to see something succeed. And I think we are both very passionate around women empowerment. 
So very exciting this year with the 60th Jubilee and celebration of the Miss South Africa pageant. It's basically giving formers a purpose to reign even after they've handed over their crown. We've never really done anything as a group of women together to leave a legacy. This group of iconic South African women are going to come together and fundraise for the Nelson Mandela Children's Hospital and the Tomorrow Trust. This hospital is one of Nelson Mandela's legacy projects. Dr. Madiba found himself one day in a hospital going to visit a child, and the child was admitted in a normal adult ICU. And he was actually quite disturbed by what he saw, if you look at how ill people in ICU can be, and especially for children to share the same space as adults. You know, children are vulnerable, and as a child you're seeing things that actually you should not be seeing at that age. So he actually put out a call to the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund around really creating a specific facility for children and give them an environment that is conducive to, to children child-friendly and that will ensure that the well-being of the child is taken care of holistically. So at NMCH what is unusual as you can see our machines are very child-friendly. Yeah. Right? It's a child-friendly it. environment. Yeah. Exactly and with children it becomes a little bit more complicated because they need to be sedated to lie still in the machine. Yeah. So we have a multidisciplinary approach here. We have the support of our pediatric anesthesiologists who help to sedate our children, as well as an infection control nurse which helps to protect the staff as well as the patients. With this crazy lot of mine, there's no dull moment. Yeah. They are always happy, they are excited. And that's actually wonderful because you need staff members that yeah. are on the go, they want to be here, they, they want, want to, to help the babies, to yeah, and nothing Nothing drags them down. Tomorrow Trust was founded in 2005 to provide orphan and vulnerable children with integrated academic and psychosocial support. The journey the child takes with Tomorrow Trust is in a holistic development of oneself. So we ensure that we carry the child from grade R right up until they are employed. It's a longitudinal investment that we make in each and every child that is on our program. We do this through various programs. One is the Junior Holiday Saturday School program that provides literacy and numeracy skills for grade Rs to 7s. Then we have the Senior Saturday and Holiday School program which provides academic support to grade 8s to 12s. Then we have our tertiary post-secondary program which provides really crucial support for children that do not have the opportunity to go to university. Tomorrow Trust's involvement with the Miss Africa Legacy Initiative started in 2018 when the Legacy Initiative was launched. We've had quite a long-standing relationship with formers in the past through some of the sponsors like CELC and we were asked if we would help facilitate some of the investment that the formers were going to do. Our mission for that organisation is to try and transform young people's lives through educational support. So that's not just financial, it's helping them see themselves differently, it's helping them get access to the right adult support at the right time, and it's helping them to succeed at university. What would a caring, loving family do? It's a question we ask ourselves a lot. The kinds of experiences you want young people to have in the best private schools and the best public universities, um, we want to create those experiences you know, for young people today so that they're ready for tomorrow. The Miss South Africa Legacy Initiative partnership has allowed Tomorrow Trust to assist little children from ages of 5 to 13 to attend our junior holiday and Saturday school program. An investment like this is so vital for the development of South Africa. Together we are planting seeds in these little people in order to make a successful South Africa. Our last story takes us to Gallagher Estate in Gauteng, where Sun International's procurement team had the chance to network with prospective suppliers and small businesses. Now in its sixth year, the Smart Procurement Expo is fast becoming South Africa's leading connector for corporates and companies wanting to expand their procurement offering.
Smart Procurement World started 12 years ago, but the enterprise supply development aspect of it is seven years running now. And it started with just a need to link supply chain and good black owned businesses. So Smart Procurement World is really the professional gathering for procurement and supply chain in South Africa. It's, it's the only big gathering. And the fact that we co-host the Enterprise and Supply Development Expo, these small businesses get access to supply chain where they otherwise wouldn't really have that opportunity. And to be honest, I think we've got a record number of visitors this year. We had a wonderful over an hour session with the Deputy Minister of Finance yesterday. So really just a lot of international benchmarking, but also a lot of local relevance around policy that's supporting economic development and procuring from smaller businesses, but also just to alleviate corruption within all procurement process. It's a wonderful marketplace just to find good black-owned businesses that are doing great work for a particular company and you can onboard them very quickly. So Enterprise and Supply Development is a portion of the Triple B Codes of Good Practice whereby any corporate that um, supports Triple B E has to commit to developing small suppliers within and outside of their supply chain. The whole purpose of Enterprise and Supply Development is to capacitate suppliers for economic growth, job creation and ultimate sustainability. Through programs like this and through initiatives like Smart Procurement World, we expose our beneficiaries to larger markets and that helps them in turn become sustainable. In our program at the moment, we have 45 beneficiaries um, who we're currently formally developing through one means or another. And every year we take on a new influx of beneficiaries to replace the ones that have just graduated. So SMMEs contribute to about 40% of the economy in South Africa. Growing the SMMEs towards sustainability and watching SMMEs grow from SMME status into large generic enterprises is really the catalyst that's going to get our economy started again. Our company is dealing with the hospitality industry. We've been in the company for over 30 years now. So we supply you from your guest amenities up to your garden umbrellas. Recently, we started forming a new company um, as a division of Peanut Gallery called PG Echo. And in that, we are actually incorporating all eco-friendly products and biodegradable products as well, which we introduce to the hotels, lodges and inns. They've done the first phase of Vacation Club on both aerators and um, shower heads and they're already showing like a 70% um, water saving. Native Norsi is a beekeeping company that specializes in the production of raw South African pure honey. The challenges that we face at Native Norsi is mostly a familiarity with the product and also with the company because uh, beekeeping is not very popular, especially amongst uh, the young black population. So we have now to actually break ground, you know, um, we're always having to be the ones who are finding people in the industry who can share knowledge with us, who can do some skills transfer, who can also help us in terms of the marketing and the production of the, of the product. We did meet a lot of people which we feel can add value. Yes, the right clientele uh, was here. We did interact with them. We are excited to see what business is going to come out of it after the conference. Cobot is a collaborative robot. So a collaborative robot is basically a robot that doesn't have the traditional industrial robot feel of being inside of a box and a safety cage. All of us in industry needs to jump onto the trend, being adaptive, learn new skills, and follow where everything is going. And the big question is, are we driving change or are we driven by change? One of the key focus areas at APSA at the moment is growing the SME market, growing the number of businesses, helping small entrepreneurs. We saw this as an opportunity to help SMEs. If we grow the SME market, we'll be able to create more jobs, job creations, and everyone actually succeeds. At this event, right, in order to, to help 
our company grow. We see a lot of new innovative, new SMEs, thinking of new ways of tackling problems that have always been there. And by obviously interacting with them, you get insights and how do you actually bring them on board to help your company. So the APSA in this instance actually evolves with the SME. And that's a wrap on this episode of Sun Vision. We hope you enjoyed the show and look forward to seeing you at a Sun International Hotel or Casino soon. Thanks for watching and cheers for now.